much for being here today. Um, my name is Rebecca Rosenberg. I am Texas Fruitarian on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I've been vegan for the animals for 10 years. And thank you, vegans, thank you. And I've been following a raw and fruit-based diet for the last five years. So only, it'll be five years in October. Um, and I, today I'm so excited to be here and share my healing story with you. Um, there will be a quick Q&A at the end of the presentation, and so if you have a question, please hold it until the end, and I will hopefully answer them all. Um, without further ado, healing with fruits. My healing story includes multiple sclerosis, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, hypoglycemia, prediabetes type 2, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, hypertension, acid reflux, acne, teen and adult, alcoholism and drug abuse, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, PTSD, insomnia, violent nightmares, night terrors, narcolepsy, yeah, seriously, obstructive sleep apnea, pansinusitis, benzo withdrawal, and obesity. <sighs> By show of hands, have you or anyone you've ever known been affected by any of these conditions or diseases? Oh yeah, so this is like totally irrelevant. Yikes. Okay, so I'm so glad you're here. Um, and also just a fair warning, due to narcolepsy, I am the only one here who's allowed to fall asleep in the middle of my own presentation. <laughs> and I will warn you that triggers for narcolepsy may include uh, speaking publicly uh, for the very first time ever. Yeah, it's my first time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's, let's get right into this because this is super relevant stuff for a lot of people here. And I would like to dedicate myself and this presentation to you and all those suffering and fighting for answers, as well as to their, their caregivers, advocates, and supporters. Thank you. This is me at 30 years old. I had been vegan for five and a half years for the animals by this point. I had been eating more fresh fruits and veggies than ever before. I lost function over the left side of my body and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. How did this happen? Let's play a quick game. For each listed factor, let's say yes, this is greater than 50% in our control, or no, this is mostly not in our control. This is just your opinion. There's no right or wrong, so just shout it out. So disease influencing factors, pre-existing genetic lottery, the DNA that you are hard-coded with at birth. No. no? Do you have control over that, no? Epigenetics, modifications of genetic expressions, you know, the genes that you can like turn on and off with your lifestyle. Do you have control over that? Yeah, yeah cool. Your environment, the place, the location on the planet that you are born on, can you control how much sunlight you're getting, the weather, the pollution, the air quality? Can you control any of that? Maybe as an adult you could move, but like as a kid you can't do anything about that, right? Yeah, no. Social influences, upbringing, peer pressure, traditions. So, you know, like, you have Thanksgiving uh, turkey, and that's like a tradition, and you're, you are ingrained with that as an, at an early age. Can you control those, those influences that you're brought up with? Yeah. No. Emotional traumas, family tragedies, abuse, PTSD, you know the terrible stuff that can happen to you? you can you control all that? No. no. Adaptation and coping mechanisms, learned behaviors, perhaps as a child uh, you might become extremely introverted as a coping mechanism, maybe not speak. Can you control how you respond when you are not old enough to be emotionally uh, processing those things very healthfully? Yeah. Yeah. Not really, no. Diet, fitness, and lifestyle. What you choose as an adult, can you, can you control that? Yeah? <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> you know that saying, it's not that diabetes, heart disease, and obesity run in your family, it's that no one runs in your family. That's pretty accusatory, right? <laughs> but, I mean, there, there could be some truth to that. So, every story has a beginning, and mine began on February 20th of 1984. Yeah, I'm a Pisces. 
<laughs> I always loved animals from a very early age. I grew up on a farm in Dobbin, Texas, which is north of the Houston area. Nearly all of my kid pictures include me loving on animals. Animals were my automatic best friends. Didn't matter what form they came in. So here's a timeline of how all of this ended with multiple sclerosis and disability. Oh, spoiler alert, I'm fine, by the way. Just so the first decade of my life, my parents began a decade-long ugly divorce battle from the age of six years old. I moved from the farm to the city with my mother. I changed schools mid-year during the first grade, and I had visitations with my father on the farm every other weekend. Of course, I was automatically hit with depression, anxiety, and panic attacks. I had violent nightmares, hallucinations, insomnia, psychological evaluations, aptitude testing from six to 12 years old, because, I mean, that stuff is kind of traumatic for a child. I started getting hy chronic hypoglycemia by the fifth grade. I actually had to take glucose packets in my backpack to school, just so I would, you know, not go too low and crash. I was pre-diabetic. Uh, I was told that by the doctors that I would need to medicate for the rest of my life once I reached full-fledged type 2 diabetes. I was only 11 years old. This is really my physical growth that I want you to see, um, the physical changes between about 6 to 12 years old. I was definitely becoming a little more unhealthy. Yeah, I looked like a typical kid in the beginning, but I started to become overweight, and um, I, I was, you know, I, I wasn't doing all, the, all the, the healthy things that normal kids get to do because of my circumstances. My diet and lifestyle for the first decade of my life, it was a lot of junk food. McDonald's, Burger King, all, all that stuff, you name it. Frozen dinners, Hot Pockets, like all the, all the 80s and 90s uh, brands. Lunchables, uh, I ate a lot of canned veggies with salt, instant soups, of course milk, chocolate milk, and all the, all the fruit flavored fruit juices with like 0% juice that are just like so bad for your health. I was more physically active while at the farm, but visits with my father became more rare towards the end. I rode my bike sometimes with my mother, but was mostly sedentary and watched a lot of TV due to depression. And I hated eating animals. I grew up on a farm, they were my friends. I didn't want to eat them, but I was told and I believed. Uh, my mother was a registered nurse, and so I thought this was pretty credible information, that I would get sick and die if I didn't eat enough protein coming from animal products. These are images just from my childhood that I felt really hit how I felt inside during this time. Um, it, I, I, was, <laughs> I was always trying to pet the fish also. I was, I was always trying to connect with them. Mother Mary stepdad number one, my father Mary's stepmother, I testified against my own father in a court of law at the age of 11 years old. I had no contact with my father at all for the next 18 years of my life. I was molested by a steprelative and gaslighted by my mother from the ages of 10 to 12. And uh, for those of you who don't know what gaslighting means, it's basically like, um, you made this up and you did it for attention and I am so convincing that you actually believe me, that I, you actually doubt your sanity. It's, it's awful. My mother divorced my stepdad number one to be with stepdad number two. And after a long and exhausting game of musical families, I voluntarily committed myself to a teen psych hospital for suicidal behaviors and severe depression. I was introduced to Paxil, Zoloft, Celexa, Adderall at the age of 17. Of course, none of them actually fixed the underlying cause because, as you know, drugs don't actually fix the problem. They just kind of put a Band-Aid over it for a short time. I ended up running away from home and dropping out of school at age 17. I was, I'm self-medicated with alcohol, weed, and even some ec ecstasy at 17 years old. I began working in a high-stress, sedentary law firm at 18 years old, and I would then work in law firms for the next 16 years of my life. It was actually a, a beautiful thing for me because it gave me financial stability after all of that. And I was finally on my own and a fully functional adult. I went vegetarian 
for the animals in 2003. I was 19 years old, and I honestly didn't know any better. I honestly thought, you know, dairy, uh, the, the picture that I had of dairy came from my own little small farm in Dobbin, Texas. I had no idea what they were doing, and, uh, and we didn't really use a lot of it, so I, I just, I had no clue. But I legit was so suicidal and depressed that I, and I still believed that I would die without eating meat. And so, so when I actually gave up meat for the animals, I thought that I probably would die, but I was okay with that. But I, was, I just decided I didn't want to kill any more animals for the sake of my life. But um, again, spoiler alert, I, I didn't die. <laughs> By 16 years old, I was prematurely aging. This is actually me on my 16th birthday. And I look at this now and I'm like, you know, you were actually a, a much beautiful, more beautiful woman than you, you even realized at that time. But I could still see, I just, I just always looked so much older than my peer class. My second decade of life was still doing a lot of junk food. Um, I, I even did a lot of low fat products because you know they're supposedly healthier. <laughs> like low-fat yogurt and low-fat dairy, and it's like, oh, we just took 1% off the fat, and now we can call it low because it's technically lower. I did eat a lot of Tyson uh, skinless, boneless, pre-cooked chicken breasts that are preserved in salt water. Um, that was my protein after school because, you know, again, I was still following that, um, that ideal, that, that, that idea at that time when I was a, a young teenager. I was on a diet as early as 10 years old, and the diets that I do remember that my mother put me on and sometimes did with me were Atkins, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, and Slim Fast. And let me tell you about Slim Fast. It's a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and a sensible dinner. But let me tell you, when, when you are like 12 years old and you are still growing, a shake for breakfast and a shake for lunch, and by dinner time you are binging because you are nutritionally deprived and starving. So I binged a lot. Oh. Coffee and tea. So um, I, I was always really bad about getting out of bed in the mornings, and my mother would actually come into my bedroom um, and give me coffee as early as 10 years old to get me out of bed. And I, I guess they just thought I was being bratty and a teenager or a preteen and at that time. But um, come to find out, there were actually some reasons for that. But we'll. We'll get more into that later. Oh, and I actually legit thought that diet sodas were basically the same as drinking water. That's what my mother told me. So when I got home from school every day, I would drink like two or three diet sodas and just, you know, think it's water. I tried to stay active, but I always struggled against my body and never made it far. I considered that maybe I was just lazy. I was the chubby, slow kid that was always picked last for sports in school. And after running away from home and dropping out of school in 2001, food was much more scarce. And many days I lived on the Jack in the Box dollar menu. So gross. After going vegetarian in 2003, I substituted cheese, I substituted cheese and eggs for meat because I still had those ideas like I needed protein. And I still had that idea that, you know, animal products give us protein. <laughs> This is seven days after my 16th birthday. I auditioned for a community theater play called If the Good, Good Lord's Willin' and the Creek Don't Rise by Pat Cook. Um, it, uh, I found that doing theater as, as a child who was extremely introverted and by this time extremely traumatized by her childhood, that I really enjoyed stepping into the character of somebody else for a change and not being me. So I was very much drawn to community theater, and it was, it's just, you know, uh, volunteer. It's not for profit. Uh, but I, I met this kid. He's blonde. And um, <laughs> I saw him across the room at the audition, and we just kind of had a moment, and it was, it was love at first audition. I ended up getting sick during the rehearsals with mono, and uh, Corey took care of me between scenes. He's a Boy Scout, so he brought a... Uh, sleeping bag and let me sleep between scenes and he would just tell me when my cue was and I would go on stage like nothing was wrong. And we dated on and off for the next nearly six years. I broke his heart a few times because I had perfect role models growing up. Oh, this is hard. I wrote this on the slide so I would be sure to say it to you. At 16 years old, okay, so how many of you have ever been a teenager at any point in your life ever? Yeah? Cool, 
Cool, ex-teens, awesome. So you'll get me. At 16 years old, while boarding a Metro bus with Corey, the bus driver looked at him and then me and then asked, in all seriousness, ma'am, is that your son? He is nine months older than me. I died. How many of you have ever, or, or, um, I'm, to be accused, to be confused with, as a middle-aged mother of a 17-year-old boy at 16 years old was devastating for me. Continu continuing the timeline, adult acne, it kept following me from, the, from teenager years, um, no matter what I did or didn't do. And um, even after I ended up giving up dairy, just, just so you know. Uh, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, I was diagnosed in my very early 20s. I took Armour and Synthroid and Levoxyl, uh, depending on what my doses were. Um, I ended up, if I didn't uh, take my correct drugs or dosages, I would be a zombie. It was, it was just walking dead. I couldn't function, it was brain fog, it was awful. And then I got married to an unemployed 22-year-old named Adam at 23 years old. Because, and, and, and Adam would want me to tell you that <laughs> in his defense, I was the one who said he shouldn't look for another job uh, because he was going to be a world famous writer in a year. And um, that probably led to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and hypertension because that stuff just kind of doesn't work out <laughs> the way we usually expect. I went vegan for the animals, finally, after reading Skinny Bitch, great book, by the way, at 25. I ended up having debilitating depression, anxiety, and panic, attack, panic attacks and insomnia. But I mean, I guess, I guess I go figure, like when you go vegan, you get kind of sad about the past sins of your life. So I figured that was kind of normal. I started using alcohol and caffeine um, as coping mechanisms. I used them as uppers and downers to get me out of bed in the morning and to get me down to sleep at night. Um, I, I didn't really understand a better way to, to do anything at that point. I mean, I knew it was bad, but I didn't have any other answers in my mind. Like, I, I don't know how to fix me. I don't know how to fix what's wrong with me, and there's just something wrong with me, and I just don't know what it is. Acid reflux, uh, I ended up, because of the caffeine, I ended up having acid reflux, and I would have to take a Prilosec treatment every six months, or else I literally felt like I was having a heart attack. I started taking Cymbalta and Clonazepam, which is a benzo, by the way, to save my marriage, because things weren't going so well. I got divorced. <laughs> Usually taking drugs doesn't fix the problem. It's a pretty good lesson, I think. This is me at 25 years old, and I just, I really want to show you, like, physically, at 25, I was being cast in uh, community theater roles as a middle-aged woman. I was a middle-aged secretary in this show. Footloose, or no, this was You're in Town. This is Footloose. Um, I was cast as the middle-aged preacher's wife and uh, at 25 years old. My onstage daughter was 17. And my stage husband had four grown daughters in real life, and one was older than me. I was married to Adam for uh, six years, and these were two pictures that really struck me hard during that time. Uh, they were posted by some other people and uh, onto Facebook. Uh, me with a wine glass, drinking, obviously, and then me with the family photo, looking very, very similar to his middle-aged mother. Um, I, I cried. I was devastated when I saw these pictures. Um, and I begged the posters to take them down. I, I, I was always the only vegan in the room, and I felt self-conscious and humiliated as I, I just thought the world was laughing at me for being a sick and unhealthy-looking vegan. I didn't think that was fair, either. My diet and lifestyle pre-vegan, I included so much cheese and eggs for protein, um, only a little bit of fruits and vegetables. My post-vegan diet, I did have more vegetables and fruits, especially from local farms and markets. I did also include a lot of olive oil because my endocrinologist told me that this was a great idea to drink olive oil for your thyroid. I, I mean, I, I loved the vegan processed foods as well. I, and I, 
felt personally responsible for supporting all of the vegan brands as they would come out because it's like you, you want to vote with your dollar, so <laughs> throw the money at the vegan companies. Um, so I ended up eating a lot of processed vegan junk foods. Um, after going vegan, I thought my health would improve significantly and that I would lose weight. And I ate everything as long as it was vegan and essentially thought it was like diet food. And my health continued to deteriorate. I and I coped by increasing my alcohol and caffeine intake as uppers and downers. This is me at 28 to 29 years old. This was the last picture I took with my ex-husband. And I couldn't help but noticing how wide my face had gotten and how puffed out and swollen I looked. And then this was another community theater shot. Um, I, I'm sure that was just a very unflattering costume, but I couldn't help but noticing how wide I had gotten. My body was physically just so much wider. Now we're up to my 30th birthday, and I had uh, divorced my ex-husband, and I had a new boyfriend. His name was Andrew. He's a plumber, so he always wears overalls. And uh, my, our friends were like really upset that I'd never had a princess birthday party, so they made me a vegan Elsa cake. I, and I couldn't help but noticing when I saw these pictures that how much I physically resembled my obese, elderly grandfather. My, my face, my, the, my neck, the, the swelling in my waist, uh, the swelling in my waist and my hips, it was just, to me it was just like, I was just a balloon blowing up, just continuing to blow up, uh, no matter what I did. So shortly after my 30th birthday that you just saw, I decided to take my health a little more seriously. I decided to get it together, that I would take some before pictures and really look at my body and, and you know, track my progress. These were some of the before ones. This is the most uncomfortable slide for me to look at um, because I remember not just what I looked like, but how I felt in my body, and I felt sick. I, I didn't, it, it wasn't even that I wasn't as, as uh, confident just physically, it was just, I felt awful. I, I, was, I felt like I was dying inside. I actually cried after I took these pictures. So the timeline continues, and after I got divorced, I tried to get off that benzo that I took, you know, the one that I tried to take to save my marriage, and it just didn't work. Um, I didn't realize before I started taking it every day for uh, several years that it was very dangerous to withdraw from benzos and it can be fatal if you don't do it gently and appropriately. Um, I experienced extreme withdrawal symptoms. You can actually look up the benzo withdrawal on, on Wikipedia if you want to know more about that. But my symptoms nearly got me fired from my job. Uh, fortunately, I, I managed to get it together though. I mean, it took six months though. Obesity was going crazy. I was over 200 pounds. Uh, I was fluctuating up and down over 200 pounds. I was trying to lose weight with Beachbody and Shakeology, but it just kept getting worse. And finally, on September 8th of 2014, I went to the hospital after losing function over the left side of my body. And they initially thought that I had a stroke, but later ruled it out and diagnosed me with definitive multiple sclerosis. My oligoclonal bands and my spinal tap were off the charts, and my MRI showed numerous brain lesions. The myelin sheath protecting my neurons had been destroyed. I argued with the nurses that I was only 30 years old and had been vegan for five and a half years and that vegans don't get strokes or serious diseases. This was a hard pill for me to swallow and I stayed in the hospital for four days. This was my wake up call. I quit alcohol and caffeine at the hospital and vowed to eat even healthier than ever before. I needed to learn healthier ways to cope with debilitating depression and chronic fatigue. And I began looking more seriously at raw diets while in the hospital. So now I've caught you up to 30 years old um, and this is, this was awful, this was just, but it was caused by a, a, a perfect storm. And um, I, I think it's important to, to recognize the stuff that we have in our power and control and the stuff that we don't. It helps to be able to forgive our past and to move forward with our present and make conscious choices 
that can help us in the future. This was my actual Facebook post uh, on the day that I ended up in the hospital. If you have to go to the hospital, this is the best you do ever. Also, I'm in the hospital. I refuse to let anybody take a picture of me, and I really do regret it to this day. This was the only picture that I have from the hospital, and that was my boyfriend at the time, Andrew, um, sleeping in my bed after working um, all day and then going home to take care of my animals and then joining me back at the hospital. And Andrew and I did eventually break up romantically, but he continued to live with me and stayed with me to take care of me during this horrible time in my life, and I'm always going to be grateful for him. And he still calls me every other, other day just to check on me. Really cool guy. But after being released from the hospital, I still played with eating vegan cooked foods. Um, I would do tofurkey with vegetables. I, I felt especially worse after consuming any salt, fat, or processed vegan products. I still thought that I was eating, I, that eating vegan like this was healthy. It was bright and colorful. On October 12th of 2014, almost a month after the hospital, a nurse came over to my house to teach me how to self-inject Copaxone for multiple sclerosis. My injection gun was faulty, and I was actually going into the muscle tissue instead of the adipose, so it was like excruciating pain instead of just a little pinprick. And we, we didn't know that at the time, though. We found that out after. I decided, anyway, the day that the nurse came, I decided to do everything in my power. I decided to help heal myself. If I was desperate enough to try these MS drugs, I was also going to be raw and vegan for my health. I always thought raw vegans and fruitarians were odd, but there were so many healing stories about people going raw and reversing uh, all sorts of diseases, and I figured, why not try it? If I'm wrong, I'm eating tons of fruits and veggies, which are probably good for me anyway, but what if it really works? I'm willing to find out for certain if, and this, this was the part that really was my why. If MS takes me down, I want to be able to say that I tried everything. Yes, everything, even going raw. The raw journey begins on the first day, or this is actually the day before. I've made a decision. Tomorrow is going to be my first 100% fully raw vegan anniversary, and it's a good day for an anniversary, 10, 12, 14. Transitioning to fully raw would be such, was so much easier if I actually had a sweet tooth. <laughs> True story, I didn't have a sweet tooth. I was always a savory, salty person. But I got to keep fruiting myself, so I devoured a whole watermelon. This was my very first raw haul. And um, I learned from trial and error about how many fruits I needed to buy and also vegetables. And my ratios tended to change over time, you'll see. Here's an example of my first few days as a raw vegan. Um, I'm just like, yes, day three, perfect. A, a beautiful, plain fruit meal. And then over there on day seven, I'm like, what is going on here? The food combining is just atrocious. <laughs> like most new raw vegans, I didn't know what I was doing. I had an idea based on what others were doing, but it took me a lot of trial and error to figure it all out. Um, here are more examples. On day 10, I start out with a beautiful salad with acid fruits, and then I say in the uh, description that I'm about to pour a bunch of uh, um, macadamia cream and avocado dressing all over it, which I can't believe I did that. <laughs> and some more atrocious food combining to show you. So I was not perfect starting out. Um, this is an example of me on my injection nights when I was injecting, my, I was still injecting myself with the MS drugs. Um, I would offer myself a little treat as a reward for actually getting it done. But I ended up quitting my MS injections after nearly four months of agony. And I found out after I had quit that my gun had been faulty all this time. I did stay raw. I actually put all of my, my um, egg fruits in one basket and uh, went with the raw lifestyle as my, my curative approach. I would rather die than suffer. That was my decision when I decided to rely on raw. <laughs> I have to laugh at this. This was an example of a, a day 17 lunch. Um, again, another rookie mistake. Raw eggplant on a plate. Gross. Never did that again. Um, a beautiful salad with, uh, with fresh uh, fruits in there, and then I go and say I'm going to add an, an avocado dressing on top. Another rookie mistake. 
I started noticing small physical improvements like clearer skin and eyes as I went along in the raw, even though I wasn't perfect. It was still giving me some improvements physically. I started learning how to buy more and more fruits specifically. You can see in the back of this photo, I have a whole case of oranges and a whole case of tomatoes and another whole case of zucchini and then a bunch of other little stuff in between. But I, I was definitely learning to buy more fruits specifically for the fuel. <laughs> Raw healing rookie mistakes. Underripe fruits caused horrible cramps, gas, and bloating. Mixing fats with fruits caused my blood sugar from, you know, hy daily hypoglycemia since the sixth grade. Um, I, and, and gas, it also caused gas, but um, I, I noticed these patterns. Also, raw nuts in the store, I, I learned, I found out, are actually really blanched. Raw cashews can also be dangerous for the workers, and it can be a human rights issue depending on your source from them. Overt means mostly made of, so overt fats exacerbated my autoimmune sy symptoms. Uh, my obesity slowed down my healing. Um, that would be avocado, nuts, seeds, coconut meat, and raw oils. Um, none, of, none of that was, was benefiting me. Dis oh, and despite the, the neurologist recommending me to eat coconut oil every day for my brain health. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. Salt and sodium products also exacerbated my autoimmune symptoms and caused bloating and water retention. Fermented foods exacerbated my autoimmune symptoms and caused upset stomach, bloating, and gas. I don't think this is everyone's experience, but for me, it ended up being a probiotic overload. And I, what I did end up learning later on is that fruits and veggies already contain prebiotics and probiotics. So if you throw a bunch of probiotics on top of an already balanced gut, it can kind of throw things out of whack the opposite way. Overly complicated and gourmet raw recipes. Oh, they're so delicious and so pretty. You know, the ones that you flip through on Instagram. And, but they were not conducive to my healing. And the fatty, they were fatty, salty, expensive, and they took way too much time to prepare. I was still working full time in a law firm during all of this, by the way. So I didn't have that kind of time to make these long, elaborate meals. Raw packaged junk food. You know, it says raw on the package in the store. Most of the time, it's not actually truly raw or even healthy. A better fruit haul, and actually I think this is an all fruit haul, just sweet fruits and non-sweet fruits. I was definitely refining my fruit hauls. And now for the weight loss portion. By day 37, I was already at 186 pounds. This was the first body progress photo that I was ever brave enough to share publicly on Facebook. I am wearing the same old dress that I took many of my before pictures in, and I had lost a fistful of inches, and the mobility lost from multiple sclerosis had been coming back pretty rapidly. I was now able to release my blood pressure medicine and acid reflux medicines in just that short 37 days. I ended up meeting Fully Raw Christina and shopped at her co-op off and on for several years. You can see how my face changes along the, the progression line. The lower my fat intake, the better my blood sugar. I didn't have any more daily hypoglycemia as long as I followed this simple rule. As long as my fat remained extremely low, my hypoglycemia was gone. Raw day 101, I hit 176 pounds, and by 147, I hit 166 pounds. I tried to use the same blue dress so you could kind of see. By this time, I was actually believing it. Like, at first, I wasn't sure if it would work. And by this point, I was like, okay, I should probably stay somewhat consistent on my body progress pictures, just to see. That's my cat, Misty. My fruit hauls started becoming a little more epic. I started buying a lot more fruits by the case. My weight loss continued, and by day 495, I was 138 pounds. It took approximately 1.5 years to lose 80 pounds, my first 80 pounds, and, and feel like I was finally taking my body and my health back. The shirt says it will hurt. It will take time. It will require dedication. It will require willpower. You will need to make healthy decisions. It will require sacrifice. You will need to push your body to its max. 
There will be temptation, but I promise, once you reach your goal, it's worth it. That sort of became my motto. A visual rep representation of my face progress. I feel like my face now looks more youthful than it did at even 16 years old. Raw healing lessons. If I didn't eat enough calories from fruits, I didn't feel well. I didn't have my energy. The more I avoided all overt fats and so salt and sodium products, the better I felt, the fewer autoimmune, autoimmune symptoms I had, and the faster my healing and the weight loss, weight loss progressed. Autoimmune, autoimmune symptoms seem to be directly affected by inflammation levels, and this diet kept my inflammation as low as possible. Going raw and fruit-based and learning to avoid all overt fats, salt, and processed foods also forced me to face my emotional healing head on. There was nowhere to hide anymore, no more using drugs, alcohol, food to cope with any of my emotions. I became literally raw. When stuff came up, I had to feel it fully. The only way to move forward was to go straight into the feelings and experiences. Old baggage and new stresses were startled we're starting to be processed healthfully for the first time in my life. Just a pretty picture of tropical fruits. Raw healing lessons. Buying in bulk and on sale helped keep the prices reasonable. Making friends with my local farmers and produce managers also helped. Uh, when money was tricky, I reminded myself that this was still cheaper than hospital bills, and then I focused heavily on bananas because they are the most affordable fruit for me in my area. The more simple I made my meals, the easier the lifestyle became to sustain, and the less stress it created. Fear of missing out, FOMO, today, turned into fear of unnecessary suffering tomorrow. There are no shortcuts or quick fixes. Real healing takes time, patience, and consistency. Ah, Mango Island. I did a few fruit um, island challenges, and Mango Island is probably one of my absolute favorites. And then this happened in 2015. I reconnected um, with Corey almost exactly 10 years apart to the day. I began releasing all of my medications. And since fir the first MS episode, I never had another one yet, since, ever. I did several water fasts. They were about three to 14 days uh, for healing purposes. And I struggled with the refeedings and I felt that the longer fasts could cause um, more harm to my gut microbiome than they were really worth. I tried to stick with the small ones if I ever did it and kept it pretty responsible. On May 9th of 2016, I ended up stop, I, I, stopping all of my thyroid medications. They were the last medication that I ended up dropping. Due to my raw vegan healing progress, I had been forced to taper down all of my medications, lastly my thyroid medications, due to the over-medication symptoms. I did not force myself to taper down any medications. I went by over-medication symptoms and also blood work. I did not expect this to happen. I was shocked. Autoimmune diseases are supposed to be incurable. It turned me into a raw is magical and can cure everything advocate. And I was, th I was thriving without meds. It was a dream come true. Two years raw healing results. I was down 132 pounds. Um, I felt very confident. I wore a bikini for the first time ever in my life and felt pretty good about it. I finally had control over my health. So we did theater again in 2017. This is Bonhoeffer's Cost by Mary Ruth Clark at Agape Theater. Corey played Diedrich Bonhoeffer, who's like 34 to 36 during this show, and I played Maria, Diedrich's fiance, who was 18 to 20 years old during this show. I was 33, playing like almost half my age. And that's a total role reversal from earlier in my life when I was playing twice my age, middle-aged women. Take that, Metro bus driver. At our friend's wedding in 2017, eating watermelons, I became ordained online and officiated their ceremony. There were fruit lucks to have and fruity friends to be made. And there were fruits to taste, to share, capture, and appreciate. Vegan activism and animal rights awareness, I was able to participate in, and finally, I was finally well enough. 
and everything was awesome, and thanks to changing my diet, and we all lived happily ever after. Or so we thought. March of 2019, I'm, I'm saying like this year, I'm 35 years old. I'm starting to gain weight. I'm 130, uh, 152 pounds. Um, my, my body was definitely um, getting bigger, but I was also lifting heavy weights uh, in the gym regularly. I was trying to lean out and gain muscles. I noticed that I wasn't losing body fat anymore, and it actually seemed like I was getting fatter. Muscle building and strength training were extremely slow, considering how hard I worked and how consistent I was with my diet. On top of that, I was growing more fatigued, and I felt like I was becoming a zombie again. Getting out of bed became extremely difficult. Was my consistent raw fruit-based diet of 4.5 years suddenly making me deficient and sick? Legit question I had to ask. Timeline. Nightmares and insomnia came back, getting worse. Rapid weight gain, severe brain fog, depression, and vertigo. I found a local vegan doctor, a medical doctor, and did blood work. Found out that my calcium, iron, protein, fasting, glucose, and A1C were all beautifully normal. Yay. But my thyroid was too low. Um, also, cholesterol and high blood pressure. Like, that's so weird. Why, why would that happen to a raw vegan fruitarian who doesn't do lo uh, the gourmet stuff, the over fats and the salt? How is this possible? I started collapsing in the gym. I fell asleep briefly while driving. They call that a micro sleep. I was unable to get out of bed most days. I call it pull on zombie mode, if you ever watch iZombie. April, this was just April to June, of, like very recent. And um, I, I was very open and honest about all of my health problems. And non-vegans blamed veganism. Some recommended going raw carnivore. Vegans blamed raw fruitarianism, as it is considered to be extreme even among vegans. Raw vegans claimed I just needed celery juice and positive thinking. Fruitarians claimed that I just needed to water fast more and take magical healing herbs. Everyone on the internet was an expert, and white coats were all evil. So what did I do? I got a CT scan. This is my actual skull. Um, I also got several sleep, stu sleep studies done. Um, this is Corey being a very supportive person in between uh, one of my sleep studies. Um, as it turns out, my, um, norm my jaw width from first molar to, mer to first molar is 38 or the normal jaw width is between 38 and 42, but mine is 31. And the oropharyngeal, or airway, is uh, normal is between 10 and 12, and mine is 6.5. So I have like less than half of the airway capacity of normal. Two CT scans, two sleep studies, and two nasal endoscopies later, I was diagnosed with pan-sinusitis, deviated septum, and deformed upper airways, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, moderate, that's the lower airways, that's when your throat is too small, um, and narcolepsy, which is a neurological condition, also considered incurable. It's a lack of the specific brain chemicals that are necessary to get into the deeper restorative sleep. So lack of breathing, sleeping, uh, caused my cortisol levels to skyrocket, causing the thyroid, cholesterol, blood pressure, and weight gain to spiral out of control. Hey, at least we found out there was an underlying reason for all of this. I have been battling these genetic structural issues my whole life. My body has always adapted to survive up until recently, until it just couldn't anymore. My vegan and plant-based doctors credit my long-term healthy whole food plant-based lifestyle for surviving this long as these problems can be dangerous and even fatal. They embrace lifestyle changes as treatment, and, as treatment support. And after losing total faith in the medical industry after MS, working with the team of plant-based doctors actually restored my confidence in them. And plantbaseddoctors.org if you want to find one in your local area. This was me on July 1st of this year. Um, I was awake during the entire sinus surgery that I had uh, to correct my upper airways. And um, after getting my stitches out on, on um, the 5th, Four days post-op, my ENT removed the stitches and performed my first post-op sinus cleaning, which is normally done at seven to 10 days post-op. Despite all, I was healing like mega rapidly. 
11 days post-op, I went back to the gym to lift heavy weights. And on my first day back, after being mostly bed-bound and, and sedentary for three and a half months, I was able to low bar squat 85 pounds with perfect form. Shocked myself. 14 days post-op, on my second day back to the gym I, to lift heavy weights, I made a new personal record and I pulled 155 pounds doing conventional deadlifts without a belt. I am proud to say that despite the deck being totally stacked against me, I still reached my goal of deadlifting my body weight for today. Today is 26 days post-op, and I'm grateful to be here with you and share this story. I am still on the healing journey and will rebound and thrive once again. It's only a matter of time, patience, and consistency. These are a few of my meals post-op. Still doing the fruits, still doing the raw, still doing the, the, um, the, of course, always vegan forever for the animals, but continuing my faith in this healing lifestyle. The summary, though, a low-fat, low-sodium, whole-food, plant-based diet, whether cooked or raw, is the only diet scientifically proven to prevent and reverse numerous health conditions and diseases, or at the very least, drastically improve quality of life. And anecdotally, the raw and fruit-based version makes me feel and perform my very best. An active lifestyle also helps to support my brain health and muscles. There will always be disease-influencing factors outside of our power and control. But that is never a valid reason to, get, to give up or to stop trying to achieve our highest possible quality of life. We deserve to thrive as best we can. I think the American Dietetic Association might agree. It is their position that even vegan diets are appropriate for every stage of life, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and for athletes. Your story isn't over. Each day is a new opportunity to give it your all. Don't give up. Thank you. Thank you. I tried to give you enough time for Q&A. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, water fasts. Um, I, I did a couple of... I, I did like two, two short dry fasts, but I honestly wasn't a fan of how it made me feel. Um, I didn't find it, you know, they, they say, oh, dry fasting is like three times more effective as, as water fasting. I didn't find that to be true. Um, but um, I, I feel better hydrated with water fasting. 14 days. Uh, three days? I think it was three days? Yeah. I don't do it very frequently anymore. I honestly, um, I, I tend to lean more towards the intermittent fasting nowadays. The, the, the water fasting is actually very helpful for the autoimmune symptoms, and I tend not to have them very strongly anymore. So I don't find a, a, comp a compulsion or a need. Like when I was um, regaining the function of the left side of my body especially, um, for example, if I had a, a meal that was extra high in like overt fats or salt, the following day I might not be able to walk very well. And like that was, that was very early on in my healing journey. And um, so a, a water fast would help get me back on track. It would help um, like rapidly reduce the inflammation, get everything cleansed out. And um, so even just like a two to three day water fast helped to get my, my autoimmune symptoms back on track to where they were more manageable. Um, but for me, it was it was more about the um, like getting back to a functioning state, and then from there, I would allow the fruit-based diet um, with greens and as well some vegetables to continue my healing journey. Because um, I did feel like if as long as I behaved with without the gourmet stuff, that um, like I, I was healing just fine um, on my own. I didn't need to force it to happen sooner than it was ready to.
juicing? Um, I was never a fan of it because of hypoglycemia. Um, when you remove the fiber uh, from the from the fruits, especially, but also the vegetables. But I mean, when you're taking out fiber, you are you are speeding up the rate at which the sugar is absorbing into the cells. So if you suffer from a history of hypoglycemia or prediabetes or any of that, it's juicing is actually not so advisable. You do want the fiber to help aid that slower digestion rate. So. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true for everybody, but that's definitely true for me coming from the hypoglycemia and the prediabetes. Yeah, strength strength training. Yeah, weightlifting. Yes, I love weightlifting. How, how the fruits and veggies affect my weightlifting? Uh, how do you feel? How do I feel? Your weightlifting capacity, your strength, your manager lifting capacity is affected by the time of the day? The time of the day. The time of the day and the fruits or vegetables that you eat. Okay, well, I like to use, um, whatever, whenever I lift, I'm, I'm usually lifting about midday. Um, for the morning, I don't, I don't generally like to lift while I'm fasting. Cardio fasting is different, but um, weightlifting, I like to be fueled by a lot of fruits. Um, I, I tend to stick to mono fruit meals the morning of lifting, and then um, to, to get my energy and my, my um, oh, what's the word? The glycogen, like get my glycogen stores up, and um, I, feel, I feel very strong and clean and smooth in my lifting, and then after I lift, I would have like more vegetables if I do have them that day. Um, but I, I like to use the fruit for the fuel, and I like to keep it as simple and clean and, and um, easy on the digestion as possible because I don't want to have a lot of digestion going on. I want it to be very simple and streamlined. And then after I lift, I can, I can do any of the fun stuff if I want, <laughs> like, like more pretty salads and stuff. And what, what, what was the decision behind going to weightlifting exercises for strength versus Yeah, I, I, I don't know, I just, I feel like having been disabled for a short time, I just feel like it's the ultimate middle finger to my diseases to lift as heavy as I possibly can. And like, I just, it's empowering for me and I love that feeling to be like, you know, getting my deadlift on and being like, yeah! Take that, MS. So, yeah. Oh, I used to count calories, especially in the beginning, just to see what I was doing. Um, in the earlier phases of my journey, I ended up doing like between 2,000 and 3,000 calories, and I was still losing weight um, consistently. But um, as I've gone along and the longer I've done it, I've I noticed that I don't require so many calories anymore. And um, so some days I can, I, I like to keep my range at least 1,800, um, but I usually go between 18 to 2,300 whenever I do count. I don't count every day, but a lot of times um, some people that I like to um, help with, I have, a, I have a, a group on Facebook, it's called the Raw Vegan Fruit-Based Challenge and Support Group. If you're not already a member, you can join, but um, for, for helping newbies transition and doing little mini challenges, little three-day challenges and things like that. Um, I do count my calories to show that um, as an example of what I would do. So I'll do like sample days. And so whenever I do count nowadays, it's just much lower than it used to be. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Sweet fruits and non-sweet fruits. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so uh, a non-sweet fruit would be like a tomato or a bell pepper or cucumber or zucchini. Um, eggplant is also a non-sweet fruit. Uh, pumpkins. Um, okra, okra as well, okay, well. Um, but um, 
I, I enjoy eating non-sweet fruits as well as sweet fruits. Um, I, I, there, during the times when I am strictly fruit-based, I will still include some non-sweet fruits. Um, I, ha I sort of have a tomato addiction, and um, I, I, I don't know, I, I just, they have a lower um, glycemic load, so sometimes if I'm wanting something a little more savory, because I do have, a, I'm more naturally a savory and salty person, um, naturally, the, the, the fruits took a little bit of um, acclimation. But um, does, that, does that answer your question a little? Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, next up next is Kevin. Thank you so much.